Hi everybody, welcome to Maine Wedding Buzz, and today's guests are from the Bar Association, Catherine Caswell, and I'm so grateful that she has joined me here today to talk about bar, bar options, and what liabilities and risks you take, and also to help you plan specialty drinks. So. Catherine, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. This is exciting. Um, my name is Catherine Caswell. Started the uh, Bar Association with my partners, uh, Michael Frazier and uh, Michael Anderson. Well, this concept came up quite a while ago, but we finally got licensed and going in, in the June of this year. Excellent. Um, I've been in Portland for 20 years now, which surprises me, because I thought I got here about five years ago, but I did not. <laughs> Um, and that's for a lot of reasons, uh, meaning that it's just so beautiful in time and, and the people that I've met and, and this beautiful state. But um, uh, I moved here in uh, 96 and uh, bought my grandfather's farm off nice. the family. Yeah, that was really amazing. And you turned it into a venue. I've right turned here. it into a venue, Caswell Farm. Um, uh, check me out online. Awesome. Yeah, it's a beautiful space. Um, and. But when I first got there, there was a lot of work to be done. It was something that was going to uh, go by the wayside. Nobody, in the generation ahead of me, wanted it, and I kind of came in young, saying, "I want it. You don't want it. You don't want. I want it." Um, and from there, I've just been stymied by the community that's in in Maine and nice. taken on. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so, how did you get started in the bar business? What what drove that part of it? Like saying, "Hey, let's do this." Was it because you had the venue and you wanted to bring in your own barware, or did you want to expand? I mean, I, I know you go all over. Yes, I think that I, I've been in I've been in the service and uh, industry um, way before I got here. But serving people, being a host, mm -hmm. has been something that I've always been drawn to, and whether that's been um, serving the public in in any in, in a number of our fantastic restaurants in Portland um, or hosting at my at my home which is kind of where this started from having 48 acres and a barn and a, and a spread oh, wow. uh, was a natural um, lure for me to start building events nice. um, so music events uh, end of the season harvest events things like that um, and then as it started to evolve out of me growing commercially for vegetables, selling locally to uh, restaurants, um, people started asking me, we'd love to get married here. I'm like, that is brilliant. Um, and, and then it started to become obvious that this was something that was going to make sense for me to stay in this property um, financially. How do you keep a large piece of property together uh, in the state of Maine these days, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and and that's been happening a lot. People are do finding ways. Do you do tented ways. weddings? Do you do barn? And do you have? I'm assuming you have a barn as well. I or? have a barn. It's tented in the sense that the barn is um, is very eclectic. Uh, there's there's a, the tie up room. Got there's it. the hay loft, and and so while not open and expansive for tables, it becomes the party, nice. and the the dance hall, if you will, is the stage in the corner and so forth. Um, but with that came the realization that. How are we going to safely and legally, how am I going to safely and legally supply alcohol mm -hmm. to this? Um, once I became legitimate and on the books, it wasn't just my parties. I was going to be taking on responsibility for other people's special day. Um, and simultaneously, my partner, um, uh, Mike Frazier, um, he and his wife, Laska, uh, getting married. And so uh, we both working together at a wonderful restaurant in Portland. Um, we were having this discussion, you know, how do we do this? How difficult it was for him to to navigate that that process and the venue he was working for mm -hmm. um, and me coming up against uh, how can I safely how can I ensure myself my venue and 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 stay um, uh, and, cr and stay in business and create these events and keep my liability secure so it was it was a marriage it was one of these things and how is it and then beginning to navigate the uh, main state law with that was very interesting and so that's sort of how it all came that's how be. it came together the two of us uh, at work um, you know chatting about what we needed and what and the difficulties we were having understanding and finding out and then realize and then starting to connect to people other people in the business we've been working in the service industry in portland for you know decades connecting with venues other caterers things like that. Uh, you know chefs restaurants what it means to be on site off site all these other situations and what what some of the typical issues are that people are finding when they're going off site i mean as you know, weddings are not, uh, they're not in the, um, 
in the hotel <laughs> lounge anymore. They're not. They're venues. They can be in a field. Anywhere. They can be in a barn. They can be in an old house. They could be in an old mansion. You look at the front of the you on know, a beach. Of, of Maine weddings. You look at the, the cover of any of our mm -hmm. of our um, our magazines in the state of Maine, and it's you're outside. You're everywhere. And so how do you do that? It's it's a whole different. Um, it's a whole different feel. It's what everyone's drawn for. The people are running, flocking to Maine for these venues. Now, I know typically when we do events, we do a, a five-hour event, an hour being cocktail, mm -hmm. four hours being dinner and dancing and everything else. Technically, do you do bars that stay open five hours? What's the normal for the Bar Association to do bars? We we think of six hours. Um, uh, I think when it comes to coming onto a into a into a space and creating. Um, and uh, um, an atmosphere and the and the vibe, you know what that is. That's more than just a five hour service. We we kind of book at a six hour, uh, but we have the same sense what we need to do to come in to create our space and then to be able to pull out is longer than that. Um, but we found that six hours is is right. We start having conversations with clients if they want more than that or how long in, or in their day, and we price accordingly Perfect. to that. Yeah. And What's your feeling about doing specialty drinks, like the his and hers um, drinks? And I know that you've done that before. And love do you it. Love it. And Absolutely love it. What are your favorites? Um, well, it, it comes from, it comes from the, the client. Yep. You know, they, each client they, is different. Each client is different. Their enthusiasm for it is different. Um, there's a range of, I have this idea. I had this drink. I just got back from Italy. I, and, there's, and there's this exciting. Um, my fiance loves and they'll give me a name brand, and then they'll and they'll say you go, and there's there's both sides of it. Um, it's either which way a, a blueberry vodka lemonade. Yeah. Now, do you, you know, create separate like bars that. for those? That there's that way the bar doesn't get tied up for people who just want red or white wine and, or a beer. There's another bar that's set up for specialty drinks, and that way when clients come in, every every event is different. Every if you if you had a, a larger wedding, if you say a 200 people, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, to start separating and making a beer and wine, uh, you know, kiosk or area, and then having more of a hard alcohol and Which mixing up we area. Did, uh, for a big wedding that we both worked on, yeah. you know, a little self promotion there, but we did work on a big wedding, and it was really nice to see that there was another area yeah. that was the specialty drinks, and it was a his and hers, mm -hmm. and then the bars. And, and trust me, these were two humongous bars at either end of the Portland Company, and then the specialty little nooks that had the specialty drinks, and I love that. And yeah, yeah, because you can really, you, you really, you can doll it up. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make. We we work with, um, you know, chalkboards and so forth. You'd be able to see some and of that, the pictures that's that come up. What I like about the way you set up the bar isn't just set up like a bar. It is, you know, it has this beautiful rustic feel, and and you'll design it however the client wants. But it's not just a bar. The bar is now becoming this beautiful decor yeah. table, and I I love that. I fancy that. You, that. that you do that, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. do too. I it's, think it's. Uh, I think it's a a one number one. I think. It, it pulls from it pulls from uh, the barn, my barn, and I've been pulling from that. It's kind of that aesthetic. I mean, we'll do what, of course, we'll follow any of the clients. Uh, a lot of great lead. props. Sometimes I, I sort of want to take some. I know. Of your I props. see you. I watch you. <laughs> I, I, I eyeball do. them. I watch you. <laughs> what are some of the venues aside from yours that you like working at? Yeah. Um, Portland Company is great. I love that venue. So so vast and those large windows. It's a blank slate. You yeah. can design however you want. So. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, also, there's a new space uh, up at up in um, Naples, uh, Granite Ridge. Um, they've built a barn. New barn. Um, yep, these uh, we're Beautiful seeing views. seeing some more of that kind of uh, build build to order mm -hmm. um, scenarios, um, and it's it's they're just beautiful. So they're 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 inside, but they're out. Mm -hmm. Um, you do get that with Granite Ridge. Uh, you know, yeah. that's a good way to, to put it. You feel like you're outdoors because the windows are so large in, in that space. Um, what's, what's typical, like a setup for you, like a, when you come in? And I know we talked a little bit about the decor, but, yeah. you know, how many people come in and set up? Or is that something that you come in? Do you design? Do you do a storyboard for the bar like, like a caterer would do or an event planner would do? Do you do the same thing? Um, I, 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 well, not a storyboard per se, um, and I think that we will, uh, once we get our feet more under ourselves, and when I say that, I say it in the best of ways, we are uh, taking off, and that's great. Yeah. Uh, we are like, we have an idea, we, we, fi we, we culminated it, we, we, we gave birth to it, if you will, and now it's, you know, it's just like a toddler running free. So nice. it's great. <laughs> so we're, every event is different uh, between um, Mike, Mike, and myself. 
we're lead on on this, and so we're, we're we are listening to the client, and we're we're we're, we're fleshing it out. Mm -hmm. um, so there's nothing in text about that, but. Um, I'm the stickler for some of the some of the aesthetic. Um, they are completely on board, um, but I, I'm the one that's like I'm packing. I'm packing well, the little bag. Ridge, the boys did really well. They I did, thought the bar looked they great. They did great. So. They did great, and I was that. harassing them all. Send me a picture. <laughs> I need something now. I want to see. So, uh, but of course, it's it's what they'd like. What would you like up? How is yeah. this going to be set up? But. Um, I think that we are able to put out enough between our Facebook page. Um, I always put a link to a number of photos that they have so much on their plate. They get an idea of what we are. And then and, you run with and it. And then they go. We ask them to supply linens, then we're matching on that level, and then we build up from there. Nice. Yeah. How many bartenders do you bring to an event? Does it, it vary? It varies, exactly. Just like you were asking about how many bars um, and where we might put cocktail, signature cocktails or custom cocktails or his and her cocktails. Um, it. It depends on how many bars, how many client, how many guests. Nice. Yeah. What's included in your service? Like, you know, um, for a lot of our viewers, you know, do you have a list like tonic, sodas, lemons, limes, ice, coolers, tubs? What's what's provided? Uh, well, we bring it all. I think I call it the cat in the hat situation. And as you said, the clear, clear, uh, clean slate. Um, so we work with, you know, um, rounds barrels mm -hmm. um, if we do have kegs we like to have them in the in the in the metal tins um, we have the um, metal buckets iced down on front uh, we deal a lot of course with the wood and so forth along that wood props uh, burlap if, if that's right yep, um, if it's right for the client. yeah and you know the, these mason things. jars things of that nature and so it just depends you know and to you it's it's sort of pricing to what the client needs it's exactly it and we, we, we supply all the ice there's all these things a lot of a lot of the as you were listing the tonic and the sides we have these conversations of course to be sure that they're their specialty needs sometimes you know somebody will, I'll give a call my dad loves you know, Red Bull with it, fine. You know, but that's not a that's not a go to for us. But if you can think of the standards, they're there. If Got you're it. if you're interested in a in a open or in a full bar, that's what you, that's what you can expect. Perfect. And th all that's going to come in the garnishes and and the ice. What type of bars do you typically do? I know that there are several ways of doing bars, especially for weddings when they get at you know over budget. And so, do you do consumption, open, cash? Yeah. How do you approach that? That's part that? of the dance. That's part of the. Um, as part of the conversation and we uh, one of the three of us is your is your lead person so when you contact us um we're not we're not just sending someone else we're there with our crew oh, so nice. we we're following through on the conversation we started from the very first email um and, and the very first phone call um and so we're we're, fig we're we're complying as 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 you continue with that Nice. Now, if a client were needs to get a hold of you, I know through our website mm -hmm. they can get a hold of you. But Thank you. you know, through your website, Facebook, blogs, anything uh, like that. The Bar Association uh, on Facebook, absolutely. Um, uh, TBA Maine at Gmail. Um, but it's uh, yeah, the Bar Association at Maine dot, dot com is which is will all be on at the end of the show yeah. too, so everybody will see that as well. Uh, and how far do you do you travel? How far do you go? I know we go to Belfast, to Portsmouth. How far uh, uh, can you do bars outside of the state of Maine? Are you not? No. no. So the, you uh, yeah, here. liquor licenses are come through, as you know, uh, uh, qualified catering companies mm -hmm. um, and or restaurants. Um, restaurants or on-premise licenses have only a certain. They only go off-site so many times. But Got it. you and I are designed. To go to be off, um, and and so we know what paperwork needs to be filed. We need all these things to be done with the local municipality, um, and which we, each each district or each town. And take for instance, um, Yarmouth needs yeah. to require you have to go up to the selectmen and pay. I think it's like a twenty-five dollar. Uh, every town. Uh, yeah. uh, every like town is different, so you have to check that as well. Portland's more so than some of the outskirts, and say Gray and so forth like that. We will. We're licensed in the state of Maine. So anyway. So in theory, we can come to you in the state of Maine. Nice. So uh, that, of course, is a dialogue we have when you start bringing me up to Holton and things like that. What that's going to What that's going to require of us. <laughs> exactly. If it's a three-hour <laughs> drive, you know, Moosehead Lake. That's a five-hour drive. So. You just got to make sure you, we're ready to be put up. Right, in the hotel. maybe maybe get ice <laughs> up there. So we would start navigating that. We um, at this point, um, 
uh, you know, Wiscasset, I think, is, is, is our farthest north that we've gone. Got it. Obviously, we'd go as far south to the state end and, and from being in Portland. Um, so we're ready. Perfect. Let's see what comes our way, yeah. And, and you know, for viewers out there, is it hard to get a, a, a license in the state of Maine? I mean, I don't know. So, it's uh, you know, I don't have a liquor license attached to our company. That's yeah. why I use you guys. So is there something crazy hoops that you have to do, or is it pretty much an easy way um, to get it? You know, it's, uh, it's I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say crazy, uh, but surely it's not, it's, it's not a walk in the park. Sure. It's a very interesting process. Um, I mean, some of I, f I feel like some of the some of the requirements are based on. Um, I mean, we're talking about alcohol. Think of the history of alcohol, uh, you know, in the country. So, so some of the uh, I think some of the in the laws and the requirements on the books are based in in in, in ideas or, or thinking that was that was a long time ago. But it's been quite a learning curve. I've said I could write a book. Now I'm ready. I'm ready to write it. I'm ready to write it. Who wants to know? Um, and it's and it's been a, a, a long process it took us um, a little over a year mm -hmm. you know and that was working on it to figure and, out and how that was going to work for us. plays a big part and when you're when you're doing this uh, you know a lot of people want to bring in their own alcohol but I I always tell them hire the professionals yeah. because they take care of everything for you insurance your uh, selectmen's the town permits yep. they bring the ice and so an example this past weekend we did an event and they brought in their own alcohol and they ran out of ice mm -hmm. so they had to go get ice because that doesn't fall under as much as you want to help them you can't assume the liability and and do that so that's why you bring in professionals like the bar association and this is something that we both share in being you know um catering in, in the bar it's it's that if one piece of an event is falling that's it's 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 not, it's in our in, it's in our interest it's in our hearts really so because we've developed this relationship exactly. and we're in we're and we're doing this that we want to go in and underneath it but when it comes to alcohol you cannot touch it mm -hmm. when it comes to alcohol only our employees can legally touch that on the event and 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 that's the only way our liability insurance stays intact that's the only way that we and the client is covered and and the, and the venue and I think the venues... Um, because the venue requires you to have insurance as right. the bar association as well as caterers. Yes. But also, and I've said this before, I am a big fan of going to your own insurance and taking a one-day rider and just ask your insurance policy holder, whoever it is, whether it's mm -hmm. Allstate or State Farm, mm -hmm. you ask them for a one-day rider yep. that covers the whole event, including the bar. I require that at Caswell Farm. Excellent. And there's also uh, uh, Wedsafe. Mm -hmm. but out of California. Yeah. Wedsafe is out of California. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so there's way, but, but that's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But if I don't have a, a licensed a caterer with a liquor license, which a lot of caterers are choosing not to do because of the liability, mm -hmm. because of the weight that comes with that. Um, that my 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 venue insurance is not intact yeah. unless I have a license insurance. And most and bar service catering services have to carry a million and a half, up to two, and that's for the facility and the facilities insured, and as well as that the parents also insure the facility as mm -hmm. well as the bar service. So there's a yeah. lot of lot of insurance, and out our there. insurance is, is is above that yep. because of the or, alcohol. Because of alcohol, and so when people are, are are to me, I I wonder what venue and is not requiring um, a licensed somebody's home bar service. <laughs> yeah, and they want to really look. They want to look into that, and so do your bride and grooms or, exactly. or your your it plays folks a that are getting part married. Of your day, I yeah. Think. And so you have to worry about that. And I know I asked, and, and which you answered one of my questions, as owners, you attend your events, which I yeah. I love that because as an owner, I attend my events because it's the only way that you can have a hands-on experience and know that everything is going well because the Bar Association is your brand. Yeah. And it's all about the brand. Absolutely. And so that's really nice to know that you're there. Are you there from beginning to end? Is that how it works yep. with you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Um, there's some events that are larger that we put our that we pull ourselves out of the actual service, so we're available to do runs. Available to do runs. Available to be in a more um, stand back and, and see the whole, and be able to jump in. Uh, well, whether it be glassware, whether it be you know uh, anything, other times we're just we're front and center making your drinks with you know, and and that's really exciting and kind of fun. And one of the standard things too, when you're when you're doing your bar, is to make sure that 
a bar service has their tables that are rented through the client, the linens that are rented mm -hmm. through the client, as well as the glassware that's rented through the client, and the caterer can help you with all those things too, as well as the bar, because the bar might require three tables, one for a back bar, two for the front mm -hmm. bars, and then mm -hmm. those linens you know, to cover the tables. And I always tell all my clients, linens always to the floor, it's something I've said in the last five shows, never halfway, always to, mm -hmm. always to the floor, because it, you can hide things underneath it without people it's seeing much it. Cleaner. Aesthetic, it's cleaner. It's pleasing. It, it, yes. And uh, any crazy bar stories? No. Something you, you know, want to share that's PG? <laughs> that's some, yeah, right. Well, that, that's, that's, I'm not quite saying oxymoron, but he does get that way. Um, you know, if you think about some of the best experiences you've had at a bar, you know that I'm not going to tell. Yeah, and that's uh, yes. that kind of that. That's the camaraderie. That's the level of uh, comfort. Um, my best stories are written on my face, and they're going to stay there. Your <laughs> secret is safe with me. So that that's good to know. Yeah. And two for for pricing and everything like that. Call the bar association. They'll help you out. They'll design a bar service um, event for you. They will take care of you. They will um, get everything together. Um, like I said, I've had the, the privilege of working with them now. And you know, one thing I didn't touch on that I love the way that your bar service and your bar staff dresses. I uh, think yeah. it's just fun. It is. I, fun. I, I love the way they look. It, it's the whole look. And do you yeah. switch that up if like a? Um, well, we have. Um, this is Michael Frazier. He was. Uh, we were talking about that too. Uh, how do we distinguish ourselves? Um, what colors are we going to wear? Uh, we wanted to distinguish ourselves from the caterers only so people could clearly know two separate businesses who might have the answers Perfect. because there's nothing harder for me than somebody that's asking me where the coffee is and I, I want to have the answer and I will find the answer I will be I will step behind it but if it's it seems a little clearer that my knowledge is is over here in the bar so suspenders uh, bow ties, bow ties. I love bow yeah ties. we have so we have a kind of um we kind of have a, a, a basket, a potpourri of basket, and we let we let everyone kind of choose nice. what they want to do that night, um, and that's fun. And that's uh, yeah, Michael Fraser came up with that. That he was all set with that. Because occasionally, I mean, we it, as as a caterer, we dress obviously in tuxedos, mm -hmm. but occasionally we'll get clients who ask for khaki pants, white mm -hmm. shirts, and bistro aprons, which I think is fun, and the staff really appreciates that once in a while. Yep. But it's sort of you want to make sure that the catering staff is is clearly there as the worker bees and then everybody so that there's a there's a line there's a know. line for two reasons one as i mentioned so you can feel like you have the answer and you can solve the problem immediately exactly. you want you want the right question to come to you and it would be alcohol related for me and it would be more food service for you um and the other is also again i'm going to say liability mm -hmm. your staff can't serve your can't alcohol. serve our alcohol Absolutely. and so that's another thing that makes it easier for the, cl the guests to feel like somebody can help them, they know who's going to help them Exactly. Sometimes what, what happens is if you're waiting on a table, somebody will say, oh, can you get me a glass of wine? And it's not that the server is being rude or not knowing what to do. Technically, they are not allowed to touch the alcohol in the state of Maine. That has, They have to go up to the bar and... And that's what makes it so drink. nice when you uh, develop relationships. Some of how do I get my referrals, how do we get business, we're exploding, is because of the relationships we're making with um, Blue Elephant, with Granite Ridge. There's wonderful, and then you know. You get in there, It's it, the family's there, we're going to have this great wedding, everybody knows how to handle this, everybody we all knows. Work together. Exactly. If there's a situation. And we brief each just, other. Exactly. You and and that, that's a big, that. co big communication between no matter what the, you know, who the caterer is or, you where the venue's at, if you have communication between all the entities that are there, yeah. whichever um, professional vendor is there, come in, you know, whether it's photographer, bar, or anything, just come in and just give an overall of what's going to happen for the day and everything will run smoothly. So much more smoothly. Exactly. And easy. so before we leave you, I do want to put Catherine on the spot and give us two cool specialty drinks, one for him, one for her for 2015. And see. Oh, geez. <laughs> something cool, something different. I know, I know. Well, I take your time. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> it's live. We'll right. be here all day. <laughs> um, I'd have to say, I, I see like it, it, citrusy. I know that's kind of in there. Yeah. Like, um, you can't get too sweet. And people can't spend the night with that. So I kind oranges, of, purples. Those are colors for 2015. Mm -hmm. So blueberries, things like that, maybe. Absolutely. You're, 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 
pulling it out. I'm kind of, I'm not great on the spot like no, no, that. No, it's I, fine. I, because I, you know, I, I look at these things of, of creating that, and these are things that if you call the office, we start having this you. conversation. What I tend to do is I listen to you, of course, of what you, what your preferences mm -hmm. are for alcohol, um, for whoever you're catering to. In some as aspects, it's, it's the bride and groom. Some of the are more signature, and it's because that's dad or that's grandpa. That's what he always drinks. And there's these, these, these connections. Um, but what I do is, uh, what month is it? I pull out of the garden. That's kind of having nice. a farm. That's my instinct. Um, what's up? What's up right now? And I think that you'll find that that's what the, that's what the food um, industry does is too. doing as well. And that's, that, that would be my go-to, is to kind of pull out of the garden. What's when, when I used up? to do events in Philadelphia, you know, and, and do a lot of um, talking and coordinating of the bar services and stuff like that, one thing that, that I wanted to talk to you too is creating these specialty coffee bars that have the cordials mm -hmm. attached mm -hmm. to the, the dessert bar, sort of like cognacs and yes. Freshenet, you know, not Freshenet, that's a champagne. Um, oh my God, I drew a blank, a, uh, the Kahlua, yeah. and adding that mm -hmm. to your Irish Bailey's cream and adding those to your coffee, making a the coffee bar a little bit more of an oomph. Yes. And then also creating a cigar bar, which has uh -huh. your uh, uh, Shiba Rigas and all of those things. Basto, I see you coming. I see you in so this. So <laughs> you can uh, really spice that up. So when you're talking with these the, the bar association, bring those out so that if you yeah. want to add those things, those are really cool and exciting things to add to your bar so that at the end, you know, if you're looking to save, you can sort of maybe shut the bar an hour before the event closes down and then do these these high-end coffee drinks and liqueurs that are attached to your coffee bar. And these are all yeah. things that you can talk with Catherine. Yeah, and, and you had asked before, like, what kind of bars, consumption bars, blah, blah, blah. we do all of it. Perfect. Would you like an open a, a cocktail hour and then move into cash? We know how to do that, see, you know, smoothly. We know how to bring that in. Um, we have a we. You doing this once? I mean, if you're a parent, maybe how many children do you have? Mm -hmm. But as a bride and groom, um, you're doing this once. We're we've been doing it, and so we have this sense of well, it's okay if we if you run out of the hard alcohol yeah. before the end, and we finish with beer and wine. Trust me. You know what I mean? I know 10 seems early, but you started at 3. <laughs> exactly. Every, or 2. Just, you know, <laughs> you, you want your guests to have a great time, and we know that, and they will, and we love kind of walking everyone through the, the yeah. nuances of that, and some of that might be this wonderful, you know, moving on to a coffee bar. And one last thing, too, I want to tell everybody is uh, talk when you call the Bar Association for your bar service, they have these cute little bottles that they do, the specialty drinks yes. that are just... I brought some pictures. They're, they're adorable, so um, there'll be a slideshow presentation that's going to be put into the disc and um, and into the show for everybody to see of some great work that they've done and Thank their you. bars. Yeah. And I appreciate everybody for tuning in to the main wedding buzz and Catherine, thank you for being My here. My pleasure. This was fun. And you guys rock and we'll see you next week. Have a great day.